Hi, this is Robert Taylor with Rack Space. We're at the NASA tweet up for STS-133, the final Discovery shuttle launch. So who are you? I'm Benjamin Higginbotham, the executive producer and owner of Space Vidcast. And what is Space Vidcast? It's an online site and community of space enthusiasts. Our goal is to get people excited about going back to the stars, going to the moon, going on to Mars, doing more than just low Earth orbit. Get that passion that people have for exploration and get them excited about doing some really awesome stuff. So how do you do that? Uh, well, we do things like cover space shuttle launches in high definition, something that even NASA doesn't do. So when you go to our website, you can get an actual 1280 by 720p streaming uh, version of a space shuttle launch or uh, anything we can get our hands on in high definition. We cover any rocket launches. We have live weekly shows. Uh, we've got space pods. We've got a ton of media that we throw at you. And we give you, give you a ton of resources and tools to say, hey, this is really cool. We build an online community and engage in people with Twitter, Facebook, um, IRC, real-time chat, uh, and bring it all into the show live. So I would imagine you have a lot of computer needs. Uh, that's an understatement. Actually, if you watch the show, it's kind of funny. The entire set behind us, it's not a green screen. Those are all the computers running the show. And it's pretty harsh because it's not just the live video needs that we have. It's also the web hosting needs as well. When we get a, a shuttle launch like this, w the, the viewership is amazing. We'll be larger than CNN and NBC combined. And unlike going to a television station, you're going to our website to watch that video. So we have to have something that scales up for these huge shuttle launches, but then scales right back down when we don't have something like this going on and we don't have a kajabillion people watching at the same time. So tell us a little bit about your search for hosting needs, uh, what you found out and where you are now. What we did is we started with Media Temple because it was a small, easy package for us to, to work with. And they served us very, very well for a very long time. Uh, but then we grew past. We, we started with like, like their base, their little grid service, and that worked for a while. Uh, then we grew past it, so we moved into their DV system, and then we moved all the way up to their extreme package. And then you know, from there, there's a huge jump into this other system. And so we're like, okay, this, is, this just doesn't work for us. Um, they were great. Uh, we loved them, but we outgrew them. And so we started looking at hosting in the cloud, and we needed a cloud provider. And it really came down to two, Amazon and Rackspace. The problem with Amazon was there was no support. I couldn't call anyone to get information on what I was looking for. Uh, it was very difficult to get answers on what I needed. And we don't necessarily have a large number of techies willing to work with technical problems when something goes down. And so we needed someone we could rely on from a support standpoint, as well as have all the cool technology in the cloud to make it happen. And that's where we ended on Rackspace. So how long have you been with Rackspace? I have I, a while. Um, it's been a couple of launches now. And it used to be when we'd hit a launch event, um, our provider would go down. Uh, we'd just get hit with too many requests, Apache would die, and off you go. Uh, and for the last two launches now, with Rackspace, what we do is we, it's awesome, actually. Uh, you, you scale up your instance. You say, oh, you know what? I, I'm going to spend 20 bucks today. And that's all it is, really, right? You scale to the largest instance, 20 bucks a day. That's what it costs us. I want 16 gigs of RAM. I want to just overload this server with, uh, with hardware. And that's that's what we do. And then when the launch is done, we'll, we won't go all the way back down because there there's it staggers a little bit. We, so we still have a lot of people on there, so we'll kind of stagger it down. So the next day we'll jump it down a level, then we'll jump it down a level, and then we'll jump it down a level. So we're paying for what we need. We're not we're not buying our own servers and having to overbuy for one day events like this. And, and at the same time, we're able to scale up to events like this as demanded. And, and I mean, we're, we're talking about a lot. It's basically the dig and slash dot effect concurrently at the same time on the website. That just per along like nothing's going on. So you mentioned that support was something important to you. How has your experience been with Rackspace support? Oh, phenomenal. I mean, even stuff you guys don't necessarily have to support, you'll do whatever you can to help us to make sure that our experience is great. Uh, I mean, you, you, I, all support should be based around what Rackspace does from a support standpoint. It's great. Uh, both on the phone and the live chat option where you can just say, hey, I need, I need some help. Um, no matter how you want to get into support, you have options for it. And once you're in there, it's very quick and easy to get answers. Unlike other support areas where you're, you're jumping it from tier to tier, and I'm sure there's a tier, I don't know how the tiered system works, but even your tier one tech support people are more knowledgeable than some of the tier three tech support people that you get in, in other places. It was kind of awesome. Excellent. So if you could tell Rackspace one thing you'd like to change, what would that be? I guess what I would look for for something like me would be more redundancy in the system. So, and I, I know that there are certain features being worked on, but uh, like load balancers. So, if something does happen to one instance, I have an immediate failover instance, uh, something like that. 
automatic, I know there are managed services now, but a little bit more automation in some of that stuff where the system automatically balances things uh, so that I can have uh, several instances running to ensure that I have 100% uptime because five nines isn't good enough anymore. Um, you, you, it's it's 100% or nothing, right? So. so you may have missed this because we were at the shuttle launch. Yes. But we had another launch today, and that is Load Balancer as a Service is now launched. Is that something interesting? I actually, I actually had no idea. Actually, yeah, absolutely. Having a, <laughs> I completely missed that. No, uh, having, yeah, uh, a Load Balancer would be great. That's exactly what we want for something like this. Instead of having one large instance, have three or four smaller instances that you can bounce between. And, um, you know, if one of them goes offline, content monitoring, all that fun jazz. And that's something you can do easily with your own hardware, but in the cloud, much harder to do. Well, we like to... What we like to do at Rackspace is we like to ask the hard question, what can we do better for you? And it's even better that we can say on the same day you asked <laughs> that we provided that. Anyway. Yeah, it's, it's weird. You might even think that it was staged. I actually had no idea, none whatsoever. So that's really cool, actually. That will, that will solve a good chunk of, of what we need to do. Um, what a great day. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Ben, and very much good luck on Space, Space. So thank you guys so much for watching. Stay tuned if you're watching live. Space Vidcast After Dark is up next. We'll see you next week.